So what's going on guys, Kade is here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the best sorceress PvE build in Lost Ark. So in this guide I will show you what abilities and awakening skill you want to get, then as well I will explain what are the best engravings and cards to use for endgame content. And then lastly I will show you the best gameplay and even which stats you need to allocate for PvE so you would be able to get the best results and highest damage possible and much more. So no matter how high or low your gear score is or your character level, you can easily use this build and follow this step by step guide. So if all this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So Sorceress is one of the two starting mage classes available in Lost Ark. She specializes in dealing ranged magic damage with elements of fire, lightning and ice. This is a really good starting class for new or veteran players, as she deals high damage at all stages of progression. And then around level 50 this class has access to reflex engraving, which disables her arcane rupture and magic amplification skills. And by doing this we will increase our overall damage and lower our cooldowns at the same time. So this build is designed to deal consistent damage with low downtime whatsoever. And this is by far the best and most optimized PvE build in the game. Ok so then let's move over to the build itself and these are the skills you want to have. So for the first ability we have the blaze and we want to use 10 levels to unlock the damage amplification, flame expansion and weak point detection and then for your rune you want to get the bleed. Then for the second ability we have the rhyme arrow and we use 10 more levels to select the quick prep, piercing strike and the ice pick. And lastly for your rune you want to get the focus. Then for the next one we have the esoteric reaction. And we use again 10 levels to get the quick prep, final strike and the stabilized crystal. And then for your rune you want to get the gale wind. Then for the fourth ability we have the punishing strike. And we use 10 skill levels to unlock the mind enhancement, unavoidable fate and final strike. And then for your rune you want to get the gale wind. Then for the next one we have the reverse gravity skill and we spend 10 more levels to select the rift acceleration, lava area and weak point detection. And then lastly for your rune you want to get the focus. So then for one of the last abilities we have the squall and this time we use just 4 levels to get the mine enhancement and then for your rune you want to get the rage. Then for the 7th ability we have the seraphic hail and we use once again 10 levels to unlock the quick prep additional explosion and weak point detection. And then lastly for your rune you want to get the gale wind. And then for the last and final ability we have the frost call. And we use 10 levels to get the mind enhancement, unstable rule and the final strike. And then for your rune you want to get the gale wind. Then as well after level 50 for your awakening skill you want to get the Envisca Smite. But if you haven't reached level 50 yet then here's a specific guide on which abilities you should upgrade first while leveling with the sorceress class. And then on top of all this focus on equipping as high item level gear as you can. And then at the end game you should have 350 swiftness and 1250 crit. But again if you haven't reached this point yet then try to have around 70% stats into crit and 30% stats into swiftness. Ok so then the way I would recommend to upgrade this build is at level 50 you will get around 250 points. So here's how your build should look like. But then by doing more and more endgame content you will get more points. And at the absolute endgame this is how your build should look like with all the 340 skill points. So at the start you use the 248 point build. And then by leveling up and completing quests you will get more points. So just keep on improving your skills and getting higher tier runes as well. So now let's move over to the engravings and you want to get reflex. This is the most important class engraving. It has no downsides because you will increase your damage output while reducing cooldowns. It only locks out the arcane rupture and magic amplification skills which we will not be using and this will increase our overall damage. So then the second engraving is called the precision dagger and this engraving will passively increase your critical hit chance. This build heavily relies on critical hits in order to maximize amount of damage. The penalty on this graving is minus 12% critical damage but this number is very little in comparison that our skills and tripods give us in return. Then the next one is called the Hitmaster and this is a simple and good engraving for your overall damage increase which is very cheap to get as well. Then for your fourth engraving you want to get the Adrenaline and this engraving will just simply increase our damage and crit chance with no drawbacks whatsoever 
so this is no brainer. Then the next one is called the Grudge, and this is more advanced engraving that is recommended for tier 3 content. This Grudge is the most efficient engraving against mobs and you will get your damage increased, but in return you will take 20% more damage. So when you get at the super endgame which is the tier 3 content, then get this engraving and before using it get it to at least level 2, because a level 1 engraving is not that efficient. And then for the last engraving we have the Cursed Doll, and this one usually is the last choice engraving. It increases your damage but reduces the amount of healing you receive, so I recommend to get this one after all the other engravings first. So then in a quick summary, I would recommend to get the top 3 engravings first and then the bottom 3. And then last but not the least, let's move over to your cards, and you want to get the Armin, Seria, Solas, King Tarwain, Carmen and Delane Armen. In general, these cards are an endgame system for maximizing your character, so you don't have to get them right away. But these specific cards will optimize your damage output in PvE even more. I did bunch of testing for this build and this was the best and most optimized card set. Okay, so then moving over to the gameplay, and if you have played this class while leveling, you will be very familiar with these skills, so I will just try to give you a short description. So the blaze is your main skill used to apply synergy. When attacking mobs or bosses, always try to maintain your synergy buff by using the blaze skill 24-7, and as this damage buff is 10 seconds long, you can constantly maintain it, so just don't forget it. Then the squall is your main counter skill. It has a startup animation, so don't cast it too late when countering the enemy's attack. Then the next 4 skills which are the Frost Call, Seraphic Hail, Punishing Strike and the Esoteric Reaction are your main 4 big damage skills. Then the next ability called the Rhyme Arrow is your main skill for animation cancelling out of Punishing Strike ability. Or as well this is a very great AV skill to burst massive amounts of mob groups. Then the Reverse Gravity is another close range skill that does good damage and creates a circle that knocks your enemies in the air, dealing damage 2 times. The enemy takes damage when he gets thrown in the air and then the second time when he falls. And then lastly our awakening skill is called the Inviscus Might. And the skill is more used for chaos dungeons or any other type of place where you're fighting against massive amounts of mobs. So just use the ability and this will create a massive energy circle that will do triple amount of damage at the start and then all the enemies will be pulled to one spot, and then the final 4 damage explosion will happen. So, as you can tell, save this skill for when you need to clear mob groups very quickly, or if you get overwhelmed. Ok, so then let's move over to the skill rotations. This mage class has only one rotation, as all of the skills can be used in no particular order. So, the highest damage rotation is to first of all use the blaze ability, and this will give a buff to you but a debuff to the enemy, and then use all of your other damage skills, like the punishing strike, run arrow, esoteric reaction, frost skull and etc. One of my most favorite things about this class and the build itself is the very high damage you can do and you don't have to really think much about which skills in which order you want to use. As long as you maintain the blaze debuff on the enemy you are good to go. So now in my last and final conclusions for this build. The sorcerer's build is instacast which means that you don't have to do any skill timing or rotations whatsoever. You can easily cast skills as they come up. Just make sure that you combine your big skills with the other damage buffs from your teammates in case if you're planning to do group PvE content. Then as well your blink is a good mobility from your identity. Use it to reposition or dodge enemy AOEs. Since this build has no specialization stats, the rate which builds up the identity meter is notably very slow, so you should still be mindful of preserving at least one teleport in case of emergencies, because each dodge will cost 30% of all of your arcane meter. And then lastly, this build is very mana hungry, so if you're struggling with upkeeping mana, the other players in your group will be able to provide mana regeneration, or if you're playing solo then use the mana regeneration food and get better focus runes. So overall, if you're looking to play the most powerful and highest damage build in Lost Ark, then try this one out and I hope you enjoy it. And that's about it. So I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good Lost Ark PvE classes that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell, so this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I'll catch you in my next video. So take it easy, peace. Yo, I